All right, so um, S23, right? It seems like you're interested in, in, in this specific SARM. And honestly, I don't blame you. The fitness world is, is buzzing about S23 and, and all this talk about insane muscle gains and strength increases. So uh, we got we to gotta dive into this stuff, right? You sent over a bunch of research and articles about it. So let's, uh, let's get into this S23 deep dive and, uh, and see if it really was up to all the hype. We'll also touch on the legal stuff, which is always important with these kinds of compounds. If you are interested in more health and legal topics like this, you can visit our website at publichealthlaw.net. Well, the interesting thing about S23 is that it's actually a, uh, it's part of this, this family of compounds called SARMs uh, that stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators. And you can kind of think of them like steroids, but, but they're designed to be a little bit more targeted in, in how they work hoping to get those same kind of effects, but maybe with fewer side effects. So you're saying maybe less of those classic, like stereotypical steroid side effects that, that we always hear about. Well, not, not exactly. Um, S23 is actually known to be pretty potent, even even among SARMs. Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. The articles you sent over, they all highlight S23's potential to, to really pack on muscle increased strength and even make your bones stronger. Mm. And all this without the water retention that that often comes with traditional steroids. Yeah. that's That's a pretty attractive package, especially for for athletes and bodybuilders. Exactly, and and these benefits all come down to how S23 works on like a molecular level. Mm. It's what we call a C6 compound, which means it's really good at attaching to androgen receptors, particularly the ones that are found in your muscles. It's almost like a key fitting perfectly into a lock, you know? And by being a strong, what we call agonist S23, it basically just flips a switch in your body that triggers muscle growth. So it's basically just telling your muscles, hey, time to grow and grow fast. But but you mentioned bone strength too. Why why is that so important, especially in, in this context? Yeah, that's a that's a great point because you see with with all this increased muscle mass and strength comes comes more stress on on your skeletal system. It's kinda like building a skyscraper, right? You need a super strong foundation to support all that weight. So S23's ability to potentially make bones stronger is super important for, for athletes, especially the ones who are really pushing their limits because it can help prevent injuries and, and make sure they can just keep performing at their best. So it's about building that strong foundation to handle all that extra power. We've talked about some pretty impressive potential benefits so far, but let's be real. There's got to be some downsides, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the potential drawbacks of using S23? Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's no such thing as a free lunch, especially when we're talking about things that, that really mess with your hormones. One yeah. of the major concerns with, with S23 is that it can suppress your body's natural testosterone production. And this can lead to to a lot of issues from infertility to to a whole host of hormonal imbalances. Yeah. Wow, that's serious. The research does mention something called uh, post-cycle therapy or, or PCT as a way to get those testosterone levels back to normal after after using S23. Is that is that a common thing? Oh yeah, PCT is absolutely crucial if you're even thinking about using S23. It helps get your hormone levels back to a healthy place. Mm. But here's another thing to think about. The long-term effects of S23 on humans are still mostly unknown. Most of the research that's been done has been on animals, so we're really still in the early stages of understanding how it affects people you know, in the long run. So it's almost like stepping into uncharted territory. Yeah. You might get those awesome results in the short term, but who knows what could happen down the line, right? Exactly. And that's why it is so important to be careful, do your research and, and talk to a doctor before even thinking about using S23. And speaking of being careful, we, we need to talk about the elephant in the room legality. Yes. <laughs> S23 is not approved for human consumption in, in a lot of places, and it's it's often sold just for, for research purposes. So yeah, legality is a is a big question mark depending on where you are. The research you sent over also outlines specific dosage recommendations and cycling advice for S23, though before anyone gets any ideas. All right, this is where I have to put my cautious hat on. This information is absolutely not a replacement for medical advice. Before you even think about adding S23 into your routine, it is absolutely crucial to talk to a healthcare professional. Yeah, because even with those recommendations, you know, like like the eight week on eight, eight week off cycle as mentioned in the article, things can get pretty complicated when you start mixing S23 with other SARMs, right? Exactly. You got it. Not all SARMs work well together and the interactions can be very unpredictable. Okay, so we've talked about legality, potential benefits, and all those long-term unknowns with S23. What other red flags should people be aware of? Well, I think the 
the lack of solid research on the long-term effects is a big one. We touched on testosterone suppression earlier, but you know, S23, it really messes with your hormones. Mm -hmm. and, and those changes can have like ripple effects throughout your entire body. You know, we're talking potential impacts on your heart health, fertility, even even your mood and energy levels down the road. So it's almost like you're playing this high stakes game where you don't even know all the rules. Yeah. You might be winning at the beginning, but who knows what's going to happen later on. Exactly. And that's why it's so, so important to have these open and honest conversations with, with a doctor. It's all about weighing those potential benefits against the the very real risks that are involved. Let's say someone is considering using S23. What questions should they be asking themselves and their doctor before they, they really take the plunge? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, they, they need to be totally honest with themselves about their goals and why they're even considering this. Why S23? What are they hoping to get out of it? And are those expectations even realistic? It's really easy to get caught up in all the hype, but S23 is not some magic solution. It takes hard work, dedication, and a real understanding of the risks involved. It's not like they're just going to pop a pill and suddenly turn into some kind of superhuman right. Right. They also need to be ready to, to have a very detailed conversation with their doctor about their medical history. You know, things like any pre-existing conditions or medications they're taking. This is super important important to figure out if S23 is even safe for them to use in the first place. So full transparency with their doctor is key. Yeah. What else should they be discussing? A, a real honest conversation about potential side effects, both short term and long term. Mm. You know, they need to know what to expect, how to handle any bad effects that might come up and, and just be prepared for the fact that that S23 might not even be right for them in the end. It's all about making an informed decision, not just jumping in head first. But, you know, finding a doctor who actually knows about SARMs in the first place can be a challenge. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Not all doctors are familiar with these compounds. It might take a little extra effort and research to find someone who can really give them the right guidance. Any tips for people who are trying to find the right doctor? Well, reaching out to professional organizations that focus on sports medicine or endocrinology can be a good place to start. They usually have directories or referral networks. Online forums and communities for, for fitness and bodybuilding could also have recommendations from, from people who have been through this process before. It's almost like you need a guide to find the right guide. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a one-time thing either, right? Oh, definitely. Regular checkups and blood tests are really important to, to track their hormone levels and just make sure everything is okay while they're using S23. It's, a, it's an ongoing process. So to recap, we've talked about legality, benefits, risks, and the, the critical importance of talking to a doctor. Anything else we should mention before we move on? You know, I, I think it's worth repeating. Approach S23 and really any performance enhancing substance with a, with a healthy dose of skepticism. Don't just buy into the hype or, or believe those promises of quick results. Dig into the science, understand how it actually works, and be aware of those potential downsides. Do your homework, basically. Exactly. And, and remember, there's no shame in, in deciding that S23 isn't the right choice for you. There are plenty of other ways to reach your fitness goals safely and effectively. Yeah. Those other routes may be a much better fit for their individual needs and, and how much risk they're comfortable with. Exactly. It's all about making choices that put your health and well-being first. Well said. So we've laid a pretty solid foundation for understanding S23. Mm. But the world of fitness and performance enhancement is always changing. What are some trends or, or new developments that you're keeping an eye on? That's a great question. It really shows how dynamic this field is. One area that I'm particularly interested in is the development of, of new SARMs that might have better safety profiles and, and cause fewer side effects. So kind of like a next generation of SARMs that could give you the benefits without all the drawbacks. That's the hope. But, and, and I can't stress this enough, we need to be just as careful and skeptical with these new compounds as we've been with S23. Thorough research and clinical trials are absolutely essential. So don't just jump on the bandwagon because it's the newest, shiniest thing. Exactly. Another trend I'm watching is the growing focus on, on personalized medicine and genetic testing when it comes to performance enhancement. So like tailoring these treatments to a person's specific genes. Precisely. This could potentially lead to much more targeted and effective approaches, you know, minimizing the risks and maximizing the results. Mm -hmm. But of course, we have to think about the, the ethical and social implications as this technology becomes more available. Yeah, that's, that's getting into some pretty complex territory. Yeah. Anything else on your radar? The use of artificial intelligence and machine learning to, to analyze data and, and potentially find new performance enhancing compounds is really gaining momentum. So AI helping us unlock the secrets of human performance. That sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It really does, doesn't it? 
By going through massive amounts of data, these AI algorithms can spot patterns and connections that, that humans might miss. This could really speed up the discovery of new drugs and therapies. Wow. It seems like we're on the verge of a whole new era in, in performance enhancement. But like with any new technology, there are potential downsides to think about too, right? Absolutely. Ethical considerations, data privacy, the potential for misuse. These are all things we need to be very careful about. It's a delicate balance between pushing the boundaries of innovation and, and making sure that development and use are responsible. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive from the specifics of S23 to, to the broader trends that are shaping the future of performance enhancement. Any final thoughts for our listeners before we wrap up? I think the main takeaway here is knowledge is power. The more you know about these substances, their potential benefits and, and the inherent risks, the better prepared you'll be to, to make smart decisions about your own health and fitness journey. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Seek out expert advice and always put your well-being first. Absolutely. Your health is your most valuable asset. Treat it with respect. All right. So we've, we've really dug into the, the science behind S23, you know, mm -hmm. the potential benefits, the risks, the legal stuff. But let's, uh, let's kind of zoom out now and, and talk about the, the bigger picture here. What are some of the ethical issues that come up when we're talking about performance enhancement, especially with substances like, like S23? Well, that's a, that's a really important part of this conversation. It's it's not just about personal choices, right? There are, there are bigger societal implications that that we have to think about. One of the the biggest ethical challenges is is the issue of fairness, especially when we're talking about competitive sports. Mm. You know, if if some athletes are using performance enhancing drugs like S twenty three, does that create an uneven playing field for for the athletes who choose not to use them? Yeah, it's it's like that classic yeah. debate of of natural talent versus you know artificial enhancement. Where do we even draw the line? It's a, it's a tough question with no easy answers. Some people say that athletes should be free to choose what they put in their bodies, right? While others believe that we need really strict rules to, to make sure everyone's competing on a level playing field. Yeah, it seems like those rules are always trying to catch up with the science. You know, mm -hmm. by the time they ban one new substance, there's probably already something else being developed. It's a, it's a constant back and forth. Yeah. But even beyond professional sports, there are ethical things to think about for for everyday people who might be considering performance enhancement. I, I imagine the pressure to to look a certain way, you know, to fit these body image ideals yeah. probably plays a big role. Absolutely. In a society that's so obsessed with with youth and and physical perfection, it's easy to see why someone might be tempted to use something like S23 to to achieve those those often unrealistic ideals, right? It, especially with social media constantly showing us all these images of these seemingly perfect bodies, hmm. it can really distort people's perception of of what's normal and what's even achievable. Yeah, it's a it's a recipe for unrealistic expectations and body image problems. And and that can be really harmful for young people, especially, you know, they're still figuring out who they are and dealing with self-esteem issues. So it's not just about the physical risks of these substances, but the potential mental and emotional impact, too. We really need to be having more honest conversations about body image, self-acceptance, and and the pressures that push people to, to look for these quick fixes. I, I couldn't agree more. Those conversations need to start early, and they need to involve parents, teachers, coaches, mentors. Everyone has a role to play in, in shaping healthy attitudes about body image and performance. It's mm. about creating a culture that that values health well-being mm. and, and realistic goals instead of chasing after this this unattainable ideal. So we've talked about fairness in sports and, and this pressure to conform to these body image ideals. What other ethical dilemmas come into play when we talk about performance enhancement? One aspect that, that I think often gets overlooked is the, the potential for coercion or exploitation, especially when we're talking about vulnerable populations. Can you give us an example of, of what that might look like? Sure. Think about a, a, a young athlete who's who's being pressured by their coach or trainer to to use performance enhancing drugs so they can, you know, succeed, or a model who's told by their agency that they have to maintain this this unrealistic physique. Yeah, that's that's definitely crossing a line. It's not just a personal choice anymore. Exactly. It's a form of abuse and it really highlights why we need strong ethical guidelines and support systems to to protect people from being taken advantage of. And that brings us back to the importance of education and awareness. People need to know their rights and feel like they can speak up against these kinds of pressures. Absolutely. We need to create a culture where where people feel supported and valued for for who they are, not just for how they look or or their athletic achievements. 
Well, we've covered a lot of ground today from the, the details of S23 to, to these bigger ethical and societal implications of performance enhancement. Any final thoughts you want to leave our listeners with? If I could leave you with one message, it would be this. Think critically. Question everything. Do your research and don't be swayed by, by hype or, or promises of quick fixes. Remember, your health is your most valuable asset. Make choices that prioritize your well-being both physically and mentally. And if you are interested in more topics like this, you can visit our website, publichealthlaw.net. That's a great message. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of S23 and, and this complex landscape of performance enhancement. We hope this information helps you make informed decisions about your own health and fitness journey. 